Command Sergeant Major Fortenberry, distinguished guests, families and friends. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Morales, Command Sergeant Major Roy Young, and the captain of the 1st Battalion, 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment, welcome to the graduation of Bravo Company Class 19-19. Please stand for the playing of our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Kramer. these newly minted paratroopers receive silver wings upon their chest, may they be ever mindful of the words in scripture that say, to whom much is given, much will be required. Indeed, our nation expects these men and women to uphold the airborne legacy of a better class of soldier, as the wicked enemies of our country seek even now to wreck our families and destroy our homes. Almighty God, Grant them in their future endeavors the same courage and boldness they exhibited when they put their knees in the breeze this week. And may our republic be better for the paratroopers we send forth today. Amen. Please be seated. An American general by the name of Billy Mitchell first conceived the idea to parachute troops in the contact against a hostile force. At the outbreak of World War II, Russian and German paratroopers spearheaded the assaults. The effectiveness of these troops startled the whole world. There is no longer any doubt about the power and capabilities of this newly created instrument of war. In early August 1940, the American giant finally woke from his dream of isolation and began an all-out program to produce you, the American paratrooper. Today, students attend basic airborne course are volunteers, just as they were in 1940 during the initial stages of the airborne program. They volunteer from the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, as well as some allied countries. In addition to being a volunteer, a student must meet certain prerequisites of the course. He or she must be in good physical health and meet certain physical fitness requirements since over 90% of the training is strenuous and involves bodily contact with the ground. Up to 450 students begin a course each week with one of the three training companies. The trainers, or black hats, conduct the course in two phases. The first is a training phase composed of ground and tower week and consists of a series of progressive lectures coupled with practical work on the many apparatuses in the airborne course. Each of these apparatuses is designed to teach one or more of the five basic jump techniques, which, when properly executed, will ensure a safe parachute jump. The second phase is jump week, where each student applies the skills learned during the training phase in order to complete five qualifying static line parachute jumps from a high-performance aircraft. The company started training three weeks ago on April 15, 2019, with 334 students. Today, 259 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines are pronounced paratroopers. The attrition rate indicates not only the difficulty of the airborne course, but also serves to clearly demonstrate the dedication to excellence, courage, and determination of the students standing before you. You have every reason to be proud of them.
Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of Bravo Company, Captain Benjamin Brown. Lieutenant Colonel Morales, Command Sergeant Major Fortenberry, Command Sergeant Major Young, Seamers guests, fa family, and friends. Thank you for attending today's graduation ceremony for Bravo Company, 1st to 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment. This morning we add 259 to the ranks of the Airborne. The men and women standing before you are joining an elite group that has a proud history and great tradition. It is an incredible accomplishment, and first I want to recognize the outstanding cadre of Bravo Company. Their tireless dedication, attention to detail, professionalism, and expertise have, paid pivot, have been pivotal, pivotal in the development of these paratroopers and is truly unmatched. The Black Hats own the mission of transforming soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines into paratroopers, and their effort drives tangible results. Fl hundreds of highly trained hunters from the sky that we sent all over the world to protect our country. Part of the cadre's role is to forge the paratrooper spirit into the students here at the Airborne School. And I'm convinced that the men and women standing in front of you have developed that spirit deep within themselves. The spirit of the paratroopers that came before us, the sheer raw tenacity and guts welded into the souls of every Airborne trooper is where it has always prevailed when the chips are down, when our backs are against the wall, and the way ahead looks bleak in places like Normandy, North Africa, Iraq, and Afghanistan. It was the spirit of the Airborne that produced uncommon valor and got the job done. It is because of, because of this attitude, this spirit, that men and women in front of you will always cause our enemies to fear the night sky. So Airborne, never forget, a paratrooper, a sky trooper, we bring the fight to our enemies, whether it be behind, before, or above the enemy's front lines. We never fail a fellow trooper. We share a common bond. Paratroopers, good luck in your next assignment. Rangers lead the way, Hunter from the sky, airborne all the way. At this time, selected members of Bravo Company will be recognized. The first paratrooper to be recognized is the company gun on bear, Specialist Joshua Warren. He received his wings from Lieutenant Colonel Morales. The next paratrooper to be recognized is a younger member of the company, the Keeper of the Wings. The Keeper of the Wings is Private Andrew Diaz. He has carried this set of wings throughout the three years of training as a symbol of spirit in the company, and he will receive his wings from Lieutenant Colonel Morales. The Airborne School selects an enlisted, a non-commissioned officer, and an officer honor graduate for each cycle. The honor graduates are selected for their attention to detail, self-discipline, physical fitness, and ability to master all training tasks. The honor graduates receive a letter of commendation from battalion commander and a special diploma. The enlisted honor graduate and recipient of the William Red King Award is Private Christopher Clifton. He received his wings from Lieutenant Colonel Morales. The NCO honor graduate and recipient of the Walter T. Morris Award is Sergeant Raven Clawson. She received her wings from Lieutenant Colonel Morales. The officer honor graduate and recipient of the William T. Rad Award is First Lieutenant Hoon Gao. She received her wings from Lieutenant Colonel Morales. Every month, the battalion also recognizes a parachute rigger that makes the biggest contribution to the battalion. The rigger motto is, I will be sure, always. Riggers ensure that all your sons, daughters, husbands, and wives made to the ground safely. The rigger of the cycle for class 19-19 is specialist Diego Munoz of Echo Company. 
He'll be presented with a battalion coin and a certificate of achievement by Lieutenant Colonel Morales in recognition of this outstanding accomplishment. Every class, the black hat who made the most significant training and leadership impact on the class is recognized during the graduation ceremony. Today, Pier 1 Benjamin Steinkamp has been selected as instructor of the cycle. Pier 1 Steinkamp is being presented with an Army Achievement Medal by Lieutenant Colonel Morales in recognition of this outstanding accomplishment. Please give the awardees a round of applause. The United States Army Airborne Legacy began here in the summer of 1940. That legacy continues to live on and perpetuate itself through all great periods of the past and the present, and it is only fitting that we recognize them here today. Would all graduates of the United States Army Airborne School please stand or raise your hand to be recognized? <laughs> if you are a paratrooper, past or present, that is a graduate of the Airborne School and a pin in the wings on a second or third generation paratrooper, please come forward at this time to just yourselves alongside the company commander. This portion of the ceremony is only for paratroopers with children or grandchildren graduating today. There will be another opportunity during the graduation ceremony for friends and other family members to pin wings on their loved ones. Second and third generation paratroopers, move forward and position yourselves in front of your family members. Family members, feel free to move forward to take photographs at this time. As a reminder, Department of Defense policy strictly forbids the issuance of blood wings. Your cooperation in this matter is greatly appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you second and third generation paratroopers. Ladies and gentlemen, the first hardened has directed instructors to present the wings. We ask for your cooperation in the pond by the Department of Defense policy by not giving blood wings. At this time, please feel free to move forward and pin the wings on your new paratroopers. We urge any family members who need assistance in locating their paratroopers to please come to the boards located on the beach.
Private Smith. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Femur for Tarno. Female. Private Smith. Private Smith. Can I, uh... Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats. Please stand for the Airborne Creed and the playing of the Army Song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this morning's graduation ceremony for Airborne Class 19-19. The paratrooper will now return to the company area to complete our processing. Thank you for your attendance. Under the sky, randomly the way, Airborne all the way.